number one in violence, we're number one in ignorance, we're number one in almost everything you can conceive of that's bad. However, something seems to be happening, and it's the same thing that's happening here. Three weeks ago in New York, people just like yourselves went to Wall Street and began what they called Occupy Wall Street. I'm a bit older than probably most of you. I was in the class of 1969, very active, very, very active in the new left in the 60s. And in those days, from 1960 to 67, we worked our asses off. There was not much money. Then, between 67 and 69, tremendous motion in cities like Boston and Madison Seattle, and you know, in New York, and L.A., and San Francisco. But if you went into Kentucky, and you went into South Dakota, and you went into other parts of the United States, almost nothing. That was after years. Three weeks after Occupy New York, done by people just like yourselves, and initially not very many more in a much bigger city, there are dozens, multiple dozens, and some reports say hundreds, and one report says 850 cities in the United States that are beginning or planning or already engaging in occupations. They are all over the country. Uh, a few days before I arrived in London, I was in Lexington, Kentucky. This is a border state. Uh, in some ways, it's still fighting the Civil War. There was an occupied Lexington, Kentucky. I can't express to you just how remarkable the speed at which this phenomenon is growing, is growing. So what you're doing, like what they're doing in the U.S., and what others are now doing in other parts of the world, is incredibly important. It is, incre it is profoundly important. It is a moment of opportunity that, that is real. Uh, and the reason it's real is because people are moving from just complaints just moaning about what's wrong, just listing all of the gross, grotesque crimes and inadequacies of society to saying what we want. And it's that switch that can give people hope and give people inspiration and move people into action. And that's why it's spreading so fast. Um, just a couple of nights ago, because of what I do in the U.S., on the website and the activities that I'm engaged in, I get a lot of information. And just a couple of nights ago, I got an email. I got lots of emails about new occupations, but one of them was quite moving and uh, important, and I want to bring you news of that one. Uh, it was uh, initiated, I think, in New York. I'm not even sure, because it, as you know, under the pressure of the time and everything else, communications aren't always perfect. Uh, but I think it was in New York, and it was uh, put together by a number of uh, black and Latino uh, young people. Uh, and it was called Occupy the Hood. Not Occupy some street, not Occupy a city, but Occupy something that goes all over the United States, a place where people live. And so I thought about, well, where is this all going? In Spain, there are things like this assemblies, general assemblies in Barcelona, and Madrid, and Valencia going there next. And those assemblies are much, much larger. They've been added a little bit longer. Really much larger. Thousands upon thousands of people. And polls show that 80% of the population of Spain is sympathetic to and supportive of the occupations. Similar numbers in Greece. And still, it's a massive occupation but it's in a big city like Barcelona. So the occupation doesn't know quite what to do. It talks, it explores, it thinks, but what does it do? And this is what they're moving toward. And this is what I think Occupy uh, the, the, the Hood moves toward. Having an occupation in a city, Occupy Dublin, but also having occupations that are components of that, that are in neighborhoods throughout the city so that the occupations become diversified. They occupy a neighborhood. This group grows larger and larger and then disperses and forms occupations in neighborhoods. And those occupations sit down and say, what does this neighborhood need? We 
want to govern this neighborhood. We want to, to coordinate and organize and move this neighborhood forward by changing it. Imagine that happening. Imagine occupations that move from occupying something as vague as a city, something as vague as a city, to occupying um, media, mainstream newspapers, the BBC, to occupying universities, to occupying a hospital that doesn't deliver health care, to occupying a workplace that makes people suffer gross indignities. So the future, the potential trajectory of what's going on is without limit. It is working toward a new society. And that's what this is, I think, I guess, I'm intuiting, because that is what New York is, and what Occupy San Francisco is, and what Occupy Chicago and so on. So I bring you greetings from not the part of the United States that is the largest rogue state and the most violent rogue state on the planet, but from the people of the United States who are beginning to move, finally, in a direction similar to the direction you're moving in. And when I get home, I hope it's okay with you that I bring them your good, good wishes.